what's going on in the Surrey real estate market and where are we headed in the near future. With so many varying factors that have an impact on the market that are changing on what feels like almost a daily basis, how are all these things actually impacting the market? From interest rates to new government regulation to taxes to seasonality, what does this really mean for you? Stick around to find out as I break down the real estate stats for the city of Surrey and tell you all about where the best opportunities are for buyers, sellers, investors, and so much more. What's going on guys? My name is Alex Dunbar, your favorite local realtor based out of Surrey, BC. I have lived in the city of Surrey for over 30 years. And if you're interested in seeing more videos just like this one, I put out a new video every single week. So I suggest you consider subscribing to my channel. And with that, let's dive right into an overview of the most recent stats. So to get started, we have the city of Surrey as a whole, as it's actually broken down into four different areas, but we're not going to specify on those just yet. However, the benchmark prices we can see were 1.663 for detached, 877,500 for townhomes and 544,000 for apartments. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that benchmark prices or HPI prices are typically slightly delayed. We don't necessarily see exactly what's happening in that month. So they're good for trends in the overall market, but on a month to month basis, you don't want to rely on them too much because in a month where prices are going up, Typically, they're about one to two months behind from actually showing that. Now, if we're to look at median prices, we can see in detached, it shows a slight uptick in townhomes, also a slight uptick and in condos, a slight down tick. And once again, we don't really want to take these at face value, we have to use a combination of them, but just to give you a bit of an idea and then looking at average, we can see somewhat similar with detached prices slightly up. Townhome price is almost level, but just slightly down actually. And condo prices showing downwards pressure. And so the one thing about average prices that you can't necessarily take it into account at face value is the fact that it can be pulled in, in either direction based on a couple of large sales or a couple of low sales. So in hotter markets per se, when there's more luxury property selling at higher price points, that's gonna pull it up. Whereas in a slower market where those are not selling, it's gonna make the price points look like they're coming down. And that's why the benchmark prices are actually a pretty reliable estimate of the average home in that area. However, once again, it really has to be broken down into area, property type, features of the property, because you'll see, and especially in this video, that there are pockets and property types that outperform everything else. So these are general trends, but we can't apply it to the whole market. And so then looking at sales, we can see sales were down slightly from last month. New listings though were also slightly down. However, active listings was actually up. So August is somewhat known historically as being a bit of a slower month with people going on the last month of vacation, enjoying the good weather, kids going back to school the next month and not necessarily wanting to be in the real estate market, looking at property, selling the property if they don't have to be. So it's always interesting to see kind of where these trends lie. So as we can see, last year, October was actually the point in which we saw the most active listings coming to the market. And then June, the, month, the year before, and then May the year before. Again, historically, it's typically closer to the spring market. And then we have another kind of fall market around September where we kind of see the stuff pick up, but it will be interesting to see where this goes in August and September, and that will really dictate where we're headed in the future. Now, looking at the sales to active listings ratios, so keep in mind between 12 and 20% is balanced, over 20% is a seller's market, under 12% is a buyer's market. So detached in Surrey right now, 9.4% is actually in a buyer's market. Condos comfortably in the balanced range at 14.9% and townhomes actually 20.4%, which would just edge it out onto a seller's market. Now, this doesn't mean that you're getting over asking and multiple offers and all these other things, but it just shows the rate at which these properties are selling and gives you a good idea of what's moving in the market. And 
We'll touch on this in a bit here just to give you a better idea of what this means for you. But just before that, also want to look at the days on market. So similar to prices I mentioned before, median is actually a better estimate of days on market in my opinion because you could have properties that really you're just testing the market and have no real intent to sell that could be sitting there for a long period of time till they actually make a change and that can pull the average days on market way up so detached 18 townhomes 14 apartments 25 so apartments are actually sitting the longest and i would think that potentially it is due to the higher level of inventory as well as there's a lot of assignments on the market especially in the Wally area that honestly just aren't moving right now. And so as you can see, if we pull it up to the average, all three actually go higher than they were previously. But going back to the sales to active listings ratio and even tying this into price points, what you're going to want to look at here is if you're in an apartment or a townhome, they are selling quite well, right? In comparison to detached. So if you're looking to make that move up, it's gonna be easier to go from an apartment or a townhouse into a detached home. Now, of course, that can be very difficult moving straight from an apartment to detached, but if you're able to do so, then it can be a great opportunity because your property is gonna be able to sell and you're probably gonna be able to get a bit more of a discount on the upper end. And again, that is going to kind of tie into prices. I've shown this before, but essentially when we have dips, these gaps, between property types are typically compressing. So the gap between townhomes and detached right here, if we're looking 977 and 1878, so essentially that's 900,000, so a $900,000 difference at peak prices, right? Whereas we look at the bottom of the trough and prices here. So even though townhome prices have gone down from 977 to 796, again, this is just looking at the market as a whole, Detached prices actually came down almost further or significantly further, I should say, from 1878 to 1471. That's over $400,000 difference, whereas this is only about just under $200,000. So the gap to make that jump has fallen significantly. And I expect townhomes to continue to be a pretty hot property type just because of the fact how expensive detached homes have got and how much more difficult it is for families to actually get into them. We're moving into more of what I call a townhome economy where this is gonna become the new detached home, especially as population rises and zoning changes and things of that nature. But now let's break it down a little bit further looking at the different areas in the market. So now we're gonna take a look at detached houses specifically in the city of Surrey and see where the activity is, where the options are, what's going on essentially. So taking a quick look, thank you to zlt.ca for providing these stats and breaking them down. But overall, as we already mentioned, the market is a buyer's market with a 9.9% .9 ratio. Homes are selling for approximately 97.6% of the original asking price. And the most active price range is between 1.25 and 1.5 million, which makes complete sense because that is kind of your average entry level product. Of course, we can see that there's quite a bit of activity in the million to $1.24 million range. However, you're not going to get very good product in this price point without a doubt. In the 1.25 to 1.5, this is where you're actually going to get some decent houses and that's why it is so active now now what they're mentioning here is that buyer deals are going to be easiest to find in wally with a 3.6 percent ratio and sellers the most activity is in clayton so basically they've broken down each of the different neighborhoods within surrey you can kind of take a further look into this but what it's showing is that clayton properties are selling the best essentially for detached whereas the wally properties are not necessarily and so what we can see is it actually breaks it down further by neighborhood up here. So as mentioned, Wally is going to be your best bet, but there's tons of other ones where you got great opportunity as well. Sunnyside here, then you got Panorama Ridge for buyers, King George Corridor, Fraser Heights, East Newton's kind of almost in line, but more opportunity here, Boulevard Heights, which is right next to Wally and it's in the greater or the broader Wally community. And then opposing that outside of Clayton, Cedar Hills, which 
once again is in the broader Wally community is actually selling quite well. Hazelmere, but there's not a ton of inventory, so take it as you will. And then Serpentine, again, not a ton of inventory. So a couple of different options there. And now moving on to townhomes, we can see as they're showing a balanced market, we had it slightly higher on the other chart. Homes are selling for approximately 98.2% of original axiom price. And the most active price point is 700 to 800,000. Once again, because this is where you're gonna get more or less the best average priced for a town home. Like you go a little bit higher, then you're gonna be able to get larger units. So between 900 to a million, you're probably gonna get something closer to 1800 to 2000 square feet. Whereas in this price point, you're probably more like 1300 to 1600 and dependent on its age and other things. So buyers may be able to get the best deals in Cedar Hills. Now there's really not a ton of townhomes in Cedar Hills. So take this with a grain of salt. And then the most activities in Fraser Heights, and there's actually not a ton of townhomes in Fraser Heights either. So let's dive a little bit deeper and try and figure out where some of those other good opportunities are gonna be. So from a seller's perspective, we can see a couple spots. West Newton, Sunnyside, Queen Mary Park's doing quite well. Morgan Creek, King George Corridor, Guilford, Grandview, Fraser Heights has already mentioned, Elgin Chantrell, Cloverdale is also performing very, very well. And this is from a larger sample size, which is nice to see. Although Fraser Heights actually did have, well, no, they've only got 10, 10 homes that were on the market. So I would actually argue that Cloverdale and Clayton are performing a lot better, especially with the amount of inventory and the number of sales that they have had. And then in regards to where you can find some deals. So where else can we see East Newton, potentially a decent amount of inventory Fleetwood still pretty doing pretty well and typically does, but there could be some opportunities because Fleetwood becomes a pretty hot market when things turn around. And then outside of that Sullivan station, honestly, I'd say Sullivan station is one of your best bets outside of Wally but definitely more opportunity if you're looking here. And then moving on once again to the condo market. So overall it's in a balanced market, 14.9 as already discussed. Homes are selling for approximately 97.8% of asking price. So across all three property types, it seems like they're within about 2%. The most active price range is between 500 to 600,000. This is gonna be for the most part your two bed or nicer, newer one bed plus den, but typically you're able to get a pretty decent two bed in this price range, which I would argue is probably why it's been so active. And then you can also see that in the three to 400 range, which you don't get a ton of properties here to be honest with you, but that has been pretty active as well. And honestly, when we're looking at it right now, it actually shows being quite a bit more active, but. I wouldn't be somebody that is looking to purchase something in this price point. I'd be a little bit concerned of the quality of what this is. Not to say that it's all bad, but to get even a decent one bedroom, you're probably looking at bare minimum 425, 450. Whereas for a better two bedroom, you're looking closer to the 600,000 range. So it really depends what you're looking for. But moving on, buyer deals may be easiest to find in Cedar Hills. Once again, Cedar Hills doesn't really have very many condo buildings. So again, take this with a grain of salt. I would actually be looking at something potentially like Clayton, which is moving decently or Grandview Heights looks like they've also got some decent level of inventory as well. King George Corridor to add another one and Panorama Ridge, not a ton here, but there is some opportunity and then potentially Sullivan station as well. And then seller seeing the most activity in Cloverdale. Wow. 57.9%. So things are definitely moving in Cloverdale. I'm a little bit surprised at how low Clayton is in comparison, just because personally, a lot of the time I would actually almost prefer the condos in Clayton over Cloverdale, but Hey, that's just me. The market says differently. So take that again with, a grain of salt, but that gives you a pretty good overview of what's going on, where the opportunities are. But 
if you are interested in more data and more specifically on something that you're looking for, whether it is number of beds, number of baths, specific neighborhood, property type, or anything else, don't hesitate to reach out and I'm always happy to help. And so there you have an overview of the stats across the city of Surrey and property types so you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on. Now, where the market's gonna be headed over the next couple of months depends on a number of factors. So a few of those being what is gonna happen to interest rates with the next announcement at the beginning of September and it's highly anticipated that there is going to be another cut, whether that's that's 0.25 or even rumors of it being potentially 0.5%, although I would lean towards a quarter point. And then on the other side of that, are we going to see a massive flood of inventory because there are people who are holding off in August to list their properties in September. So two opposing forces, it's really gonna end up depending on the supply and demand. Are the new buyers that are drawn up by a number of things, but again, interest rates playing a large role, are they going to be able to swallow up that inventory as it comes to market if we do in fact see new listings rise? But we will have to see what happens in the near future here. It's difficult to predict just in the next month or two. However, I do believe that this window of opportunity for buyers is slowly starting to close. I don't like to set specific dates on these kinds of things. However, I do think that definitely heading into next year, that door is gonna start closing. And this again is gonna depend on what happens at the next couple of Bank of Canada announcements because we still have three before the end of the year. And if all three end up cutting rates and predictions right now are that it's going to be at least two out of three, potentially three out of three, especially with some of the most recent inflation data being lower than anticipated, we are expecting that this will start to drive more demand in the market again. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you are looking to upsize, this could be a great opportunity as well as first time home buyers because you're gonna have less competition. You're gonna be able to do your due diligence. You can be more picky and actually find a home that is gonna work for you. Now, if you're a downsizer or selling a rental property, I think that times are going to get better for you. But there are a couple of caveats with that because of the fact that they've changed the tenancy laws. So you can't necessarily let your property sit empty if it is a rental property for an extended period of time over six months, or you could be in trouble in regards to speculation and vacancy tax. However, if there is a tenant currently in the property and you're okay holding off for a little bit longer, then this could be potentially a better opportunity for you in a few months time. And if you'd like to continue this conversation because you are thinking about buying, selling, or investing in Surrey Langley or any of the surrounding cities for that matter, or you just wanna chat about real estate, you can scroll down and click the first link in the description to book a call with me at a time that works best for you. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out another video on my channel before you get out of here and we'll see you in the next video.